let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The efficacy of faith, everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Second lesson, Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Golden text in Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Quote, Brethren, that is our spiritual food. First and foremost, I have instructed you that whenever you come here, you should fix your gaze at the red garment and believe that your sickness, your court case, your luck, your poverty, affliction, and all your tribulations are gone by looking at the red garment. Whether you are blind, you are dumb, deaf, impotent, whether you suffer from hypertension, diabetes, anemia, hemorrhage, as soon as you listen to or read the gospel and imbibe same, believe fervently that your problems are solved. There is wealth, there is money and employment here, but only honest and faithful persons are required. Those who have this belief are needed. You have heard what the centurion said in the first lesson. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. He made this statement from the bottom of his heart. That was why he added, But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Have you seen the efficacy of faith? That is what is meant by God help those who help themselves. If you believe in your heart what that means, you are in order. It is with the heart that man believeth in God unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I am grateful to the Father because ninety-nine percent of those in brotherhood have this type of faith. It is only 1% of brotherhood members made up of new entrants and a few others who have no such faith. Faith comes from God. They are brethren, the ability to have this faith is not from man, but is a consummation of the scriptures that they shall believe in him. The faith exercised by those outside the fold is stronger than that expressed by some members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. And as such, those outside the fold with faith regard those inside without faith as rebels. At times, the question and rationale behind you're coming here since you lack faith. Others maintain that since they have faith, they do not need to be here. They, having derived benefits from their faith, become proud of the Father. So it was in the beginning that God created the world with the Word. Our Lord Jesus Christ came and ministered with the Word. What do you think the Holy Spirit should have used in accomplishing his works? It was spoken already that the Word is God. And if the Word does all the works, then 
Why not believe that the word can give you salvation? The centurion said to Christ, Speak the words only and my servant shall be healed. The statement he made was from his heart of hearts. The centurion sincerely believed in his heart that if Christ should speak, then his servant would be healed. Everything fulfills according to one's faith. Brethren, faith goes with work. God does not require your money, your beauty, your handsomeness, nor does he require your fluent talk or any other thing you possess. God requires that you should believe fervently in your heart that as you are sitting down, the Father is with you. He requires that you should believe that whatever you want the Father has bestowed on you, you should believe that as you are walking or talking, He walks with you, hears you, and has accomplished all things. That is what he requires from you, the Bible says. It is fulfilled unto you according to your faith. In your house, the Father is there. And if you believe, when you knock your head on the ground, all your problems are solved. It will be fulfilled accordingly. That is how you believe it. But another person may believe that as soon as he calls on the Father's name, his problems are solved. And when he calls on the Father's name, it will be fulfilled accordingly. That is how that person believes. Another person may also believe that if he has any problem, immediately he goes on 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. fasting, his problem will be over and it works out accordingly for him. That is the person's belief. Another person upholds that as soon as he pays his tithes, his problem will be over. And as soon as he pays his tithes, his problem will be over. Some other person says, immediately I step my feet on 34 Ambo Street premises, my problems are over. And as soon as he steps his feet on these premises, he becomes free. Another person maintains that as soon as he looks on the Father's face, his encumbrances are over. And as soon as he does that, that his difficulties will be over. There may be some other person who upholds that immediately he comes into the great hall and knocks his head before the altar that his problem will be solved and it is fulfilled to him accordingly. There is yet another person who says, as soon as I reach the portal, attend evening or morning service and listen to the Father's gospel, my tribulations will be over. And when he does that, his problem becomes solved. There is another person who, who believes that if he is lucky to have the holy oil, no matter how small the quantity may be, to anoint himself. And even though you make a droplet of the oil, and even though you make a droplet of the oil into water for him to drink, he will be well. Those who possess the type of faith which was exercised by the centurion are over 100 million. These persons do not bother to come here, but they boast in the Father. Those with faith have no problem. Brethren, you may find it difficult to identify these persons. But their faith is very firm. That is why they do not have any problem. They are always with the Father. At times, they may not even baptize. What 
draws them is faith. No matter the number of days you come here, if you lack faith, you will go empty and dead. You have heard what was prophesied before the birth of John the Baptist, that, that he shall be great before the sight of God, and will come in the spirit of Elijah, and will change the hearts of parents against children, and the hearts of children against parents, and shall cause them to walk according to the promptings of God. The Father was the one doing that work, and the Father is still at work. Those were the prophecies. It was also prophesied that Christ will inherit the crown of glory in the house of his father David, and shall reign forever and ever. Therefore, realize that this glory has no beginning or end, and he shall remain the king forever. He said, the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit of truth, will teach you all things and shall guide you unto all truth. That was a prophecy and that was the truth. It is also said, I will write my laws into their hearts. A neighbor shall not teach a neighbor, neither shall a brother teach a brother to know God. Because from the least to the greatest shall know me. For I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. This is a lucky generation. This is fulfilled according to the words of the prophecy. It does not come because we are good are worthy, are righteous, are faithful, and not also because we seek for it. It is fulfilled in our time because it was prophesied. And those who are meant to know him will know him. It is said that all those who call upon the name of Jehovah shall be saved. This is the time which you should call upon him and receive salvation. This is not the time to seek for prayers from, other, from others. Neither is it the time to seek for holy oil, for box of tree, for charms or concoction. Call upon his holy name and receive salvation. It is by faith the righteous live. It is not by shouting or praying or dancing that you receive salvation. Salvation comes to you by your measure of faith. There is nobody in this world that believes in him and lack eternal life. There is no kind of problem or difficulty or injury which he cannot take away and cure once you believe in him. If you are stationed here in Calabar or Nigeria without going out, you will not realize that the inhabitants of the world believe in the Father. Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples. He said, Blessed is he who does not see but yet believes. To behold anything with your eyes is not faith. The fact that you do not experience many manifestations in your life is because of what you have seen. But if you go to stations like Britain, America, etc., you will be startled by the wonderful testimonies they give. This is possible because, because of their measure of faith. Should you Behold the various manifestations of the Father's works here. You will conclude that the Father does not exist in this part of the globe, Nigeria. The Father is here in Nigeria. He is present everywhere. The fact is that 
Faith does all the works and faithlessness has caused you not to see the Father's marvelous works. Brethren, if you search the scriptures, it is written, Though Jesus was known in the flesh, but after him know we no man in the flesh. Recall when the Pharisees asked him when the kingdom of God should come, he said, The kingdom of God cometh not by observation, neither shall men say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For the kingdom, for behold, the kingdom is within you. You err when you say, I want to see the Father and have dialogue with him, or I want to give him a letter. Whenever you need the Father, go into your bedroom and converse with the Father, and he will surely give you the answer. Do not bother to write a letter, but believe in your heart that the Father has accomplished your request. Once you do that, it will be fulfilled accordingly. Whatever one sees with his eyes is no faith, but a thing that somebody does not see yet believes, that is faith. If you want to know what brotherhood means, do not come here, but have that faith. Believe fervently that the Father is with you and has taken away your problem and has granted all your requests. Once you act in this way, it will be fulfilled accordingly. All those who attended the evening service here on Friday must have heard the testimony which was given by Christ's witness Imi Akpakpan about the happenings in Cameroon and the one which was given by Pastor Yumiong about an Hasa man. If you have heard, you would realize that it is not yet clear to you. Christ's witness, Imi, testified that an Indian drove a motor car which got broken down at a place close to where the choir master lived. It was reported that the man tried his best to rectify the fault, but it was to no avail. And the choir master fixed father's photograph on his door panel, which was spotted by the Indian man the following day. The man was said to have been alert when he knew when he saw the photograph and inquired to know who lives there. The choir master told the Indian man that he was the occupant of the house. But the Indian agreed that but the Indian man argued that the choir master was not the occupant of the house. To the Indian, the choir master was a common man and he wondered how he could get that type of expensive and sacred picture. The Indian man, being unable to hold his peace, then asked the choir master what stage he had reached and the name of the society he has initiated into. The choir master said he has not initiated into any secret society. But the Indian man debunked such assertion, asking him how he got that type of photograph if, if indeed he was not a member of any secret society. The Indian man told him that in the society he belongs to, the picture of the father on his door panel can only be seen by those who must have excelled to the 25th temple 
And even then, at that at such a level, you could only be all the picture very far away in the sky as a flame of fire and nobody reaches there. The man questioned the choir master how he managed to get such a wonderful picture of the great and sacred being. Pastor Umiyong testified that an Hasa man came into his office and found the father's enlarged photographs there and did something which called for his attention. He said the man stared at the father's picture for some time and said to him, Do you see this man? He is the ruler of the heavens and earth. The Hasa man says at Mecca, all of them make requests to him and if he does not approve of anything, nobody can receive same. He further said that the man in the picture, oh, 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 is fire and asks whether people who get closer to him do not know that they are joking with fire. The Muslim spoke at length concerning what he knew about the being he saw in the photograph. Olumba, Olumba, boo. There is nobody in the whole world except you who does not know who is in your midst and where you are as long as you come here with the notion that you want to see the Father. Does that portray your knowledge of him? You may promise to give someone 100 million naira so that he could come here. He will not come. He will refuse on the ground that the Father is with him and whatever he desires, he requests from him and receives same. If the Father gives you something, that is when you receive it. But should he not approve of your request, you have to be patient since there is no problem. When Dr. P.C. Agarwal came here, he was scared. When queried on why he was scared, he said there was a consuming fire which he could not withstand. What is required of you in this kingdom is faith. Let our first lesson be read again. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Faith does mighty works, brethren. Amongst you here, how many people have this sort of faith? But there are millions in the world who have this type of faith. Some have never even come in here. There is no use for somebody to request for water or holy oil or any kind of prayer. There is no need for somebody to say that he wants to see the Father. Nor is there any need to write a letter to the Father when you have this type of faith. He is sufficient unto all. He is the sole spiritual head. He is the sole spiritual head. He lives in you, in your child, in your goat, in your fowl, in your fish, in the trees. He is omnipresent. Immediately, you dial his telephone number where whatever he tells you is final. There is nobody who has not seen him. He directs you to do the right thing. He approves of what you have to do, which he has perfected. And once you have faith, you have solved all things. But once you do not believe what you are told, that is, all is well. Either spiritually or physically, 
then what is your faith? What is your worth? And why do you even come here? This is the recondite wisdom of God. The whites have invented locomotive engines and they have manufactured aeroplanes, jet bombers and so on. But the phenomenon in question is lavishly seen everywhere. While standing along the road you are with him, he goes with every person, advising and blessing all. What is expected of you is to believe in him. He has not come to dwell with us in the flesh or to have dialogue with us in the flesh. He exists in the spirit as you are here if you listen to or read the everlasting gospel, all your problems will be over. Looking at the Father's picture with faith takes away your problems. It fulfills to you according to your measure of faith. Right now the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are here. You have received the Holy Spirit which dwells in your heart. The Father is speaking to you. Do you believe in Him? Do you have faith in the Father? Does your problem not seem not stem from this? You are advised to listen to your spirit. At times you intended coming to Calabar because you are ill. But when he is speaking to you not to come to Calabar for your illness is over, did you hear? Did you comply with that instruction? Were you not still bent on going to Calabar? Your prayer does nothing. Your word does nothing. It is faith which accomplishes the work. A great many have adopted the Father's decree that when somebody is ill, prayer should no longer be offered other than go. Your sickness is over. Christ witness imi akpakpan pinpointed that he does not bother on prayers any longer and no matter the magnitude of one's ailment whether it is mental derangement etc he would only say go your madness is over and that patient will be healed if somebody as a court case, stand here and tell him that his court case is quashed. That will be fulfilled accordingly. That is peculiar to those who have unshakable faith and strong belief. If somebody tells you that his wife is barren, just tell him that she has started putting on the birth henceforth and that will be fulfilled you do not need to pray in such cases because there is no need for prayers god helps those who help themselves is none other thing than faith once you have faith no matter your status if you tell a job seeker go you are employed if he believes, the same will be done. Whoever among you should make this declaration, it will be fulfilled. But what have you resorted to doing? Is it not calling on the Father to come to, to send down his power? What is the meaning of that act? It is written, the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nation. Do you not remember the days of the apostles? What other thing can the name of Christ did they use in healing? At all times they would tell an afflicted person in the name of Jesus, rise and walk, and that was fulfilled. Did they pray at all? But now 
you pray at times and wake up people what type of prayers do you think you have been offering does that not connote faithlessness you sometimes shout olumba olumba abu the bible says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation as long as you do not believe in your heart that by merely calling on that name you receive salvation no matter how well you recite that name it profits you nothing